I can guarantee you that you have at least one concert t-shirt in your closet. Whether it's pop, punk, or hip-hop, I know that it's there. I went to a Logic concert in 2012 to see him at the Wrong Bar. A very small venue, maybe only 50 people there, and it was quite an experience. From then, I've purchased a crazy amount of concert merchandise, probably bulking up half my closet by now. From Kid Cudi to City in Color, they give me a reminder of that day, like a souvenir. Although I purchased a ticket that day, I didn't have enough money to buy a concert tee or the meet and greets, simply because I was only 13 and was lucky enough to go to the concert. The reason that I'm mentioning this concert is because it was so raw. The merch stands were piled up with his friends, with screen printed tees that they hold nationwide. 25 bucks is nothing to support your favorite artist directly, and if I had the money, of course I would have purchased the shirt. But taking it back before I was born, this is what concert merchandise was all about. Supporting your favorite artist's pockets, letting them pay their photographer, sound guy, and the rest of the crew. DJ Ross One, one of the biggest hip-hop t-shirt collectors, had this to say. They were making these on tour, designing them on the road, cutting out designs in letterpress and taking them to a print shop without any real idea what they would get back. Then they would sell them, and sell out of them. People really didn't consider holding on to one of these, as this would be a multi-million dollar industry one day. It was just like, I'm trying to pay my gas on the tour bus, basically. Going back to now, what are concert tees? To me, they're still amazing and I will purchase the hell out of them, but in many cases, they've gone to shit. With most of the designs, blanks, and everything being completely done by a totally external company. Although there are many artists still with affordable merchandise, there are many that are putting adults in the same position that I once was at 13. I mean, they're simply unaffordable. Unaffordable to represent art, the music, and the artists that you truly love. Now you may rave over the thought that real vintage tees go for hundreds of dollars, but I do believe that they should be in that position, simply because of supply and demand. I mean, there were 2,000 people at some of our artists' first concerts in the 90s. And like DJ Ross said, they don't even exist anymore. Stamped into a piece of history. But with today, it's artificial. The low supply and high demand is driven by a very low inventory. Supply and demand through manipulation. To the point where those who are lucky enough to purchase a shirt sell for quadruple the price before it even gets to their house. So yes, many concert tees have gone too far. The capitalization of our merch has destroyed the ideology of playing with fans' feelings. Toying with the idea that some people will cough up two, three, or even four hundred dollars to simply represent an album that they love. But don't get me wrong, I still support my favorite artists with their merch. But till this day, I will not pick up an eighty dollar tee online for an album promotion. Thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode, and I wanted to note that not all artists are like this. There are still many genuine prices for merchandise, and I was just pointing out to the few that currently lack integrity. Let me know what you guys think of inflatable merch prices, and if you believe they're justifiable or not. Thanks again for watching guys, and until next time.